Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black artifact deck built around Herald of Anguish as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Herald of Anguish, a 7-mana 5-5 mythic rare demon with improvise and flying, meaning we can tap any number of artifacts we control in order to help pay for the generic mana cost. And at the beginning of our end step, each opponent has to discard a card, and for 1-mana black we can sacrifice an artifact to give a creature minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. So Herald of Anguish is the big finisher in the deck, but we've got some additional artifact synergies here as we'll go over the rest of the deck. So starting out at zero mana, we've got three copies of Mox Amber as a nice cheap artifact we can play and potentially make one mana as long as we have a legendary creature or planeswalker in play. And we've got a total of eight legendary creatures slash planeswalkers that can help make mana with Mox Amber, but even if it doesn't make mana, it can still be useful to have in play. Same goes with two copies of Ornithopter as a zero mana O2 flyer. And then Aether Spellbomb is incredibly synergistic in a deck, enabling some of our improvised cards, but also being able to bounce an opposing creature for the blue activation, and then making the opponent discard a card end of turn means that if they're empty-handed, we can just essentially get rid of one creature in play, so that's great. And also a nice one to loop back with Emery, Lurker of the Loch. And then we also have the full playset of Fatal Push as a cheap removal spell, and we've got a few ways of enabling Revolt in a late game too, between the Spell Bomb and our Ethereum Cells from Tezzeret. And then we also have the full playset of Thought Seize as another 1-mana interactive spell, letting us take a look at the opponent's hand and taking away a non-land card. And then at 2-mana we've got 4 copies of Servo Schematic, which makes a 1-1 Servo token when it enters a battlefield or goes to the graveyard. So if we sacrifice it to our Simaster Thopterist or to the Herald of Anguish's ability, we still get an additional Servo token. And mostly important to just make 2 artifacts for 2-mana, which can help pay for the various improvised cards in the deck. And then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Tezzeret's Touch, an enchantment aura that enchants an artifact, turning it into a 5-5 in addition to its other types. And then when the enchanted artifact is put into the graveyard, we can return that card to our hand. So we can put this on maybe a Servo Schematic or an Ornithopter to turn it into a 5-5 to start applying pressure right away. Also great with the Thopter tokens from Science Master Thopterist which is our next card here, a 1-4 legendary creature, saying whenever we cast an artifact spell we get to make a 1-1 Thopter token, and for 1 and a blue we can sacrifice 2 artifacts to draw a card, so that's also a nice way to maybe sacrifice a Mox Amber if we draw the second copy. Then Metallic Rebuke can often be played on turn 2 in this deck as a counter spell for 2 and a blue that also has Improvise so we can tap our artifacts to help pay for it. And then we can counter target spell unless this controller pays 3 mana. And then we've got the full play set of Emery which can also often be played on turn 2 thanks to the 1 mana discount for each artifact in play. And when Emery enters a battlefield we mill the top 4 cards of our library and we can tap Emery and choose an artifact in our graveyard that we can cast for the turn. So great in combination with our free spells like Mox Amber and Ornithop since we won't have to pay any additional mana, but also nice with Aether Spellbomb, since we can just play it for one mana and then either use it to bounce an opposing creature or sacrifice it for one mana to draw a card, so that makes it a nice card draw engine with Emery as well. And then moving up the curve, we've got two copies of Tazeret, the Schemer, another edition from Kaladesh Remastered. Starts out at 5 loyalty, so it doesn't take too long to reach the ultimate. And the plus one makes an artifact token named Ethereum Cell, which is basically a treasure token. So we can sacrifice it to add one mana of any color, which is also a great way to enable a revolt for Fatal Push and give us more artifacts in play for Improvise. And then a minus two gives a creature plus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of artifacts we control. Can even help us take out indestructible creatures, since we're decreasing the toughness. And then the minus seven ultimate gives us an emblem saying at the beginning of combat, we get to turn one of our artifacts into a five five. So it's kind of similar to Tezzeret's Touch, but we get to do it turn after turn, and it doesn't end at the end of turn, so that creature is going to stay a five five. And then our curve topper, Herald of Anguish, which we can sometimes play on turn four if we've got a servo schematic on turn two. So it can come down pretty quickly when the opponent still has cards in hand to make the opponent discard, and of course great with Aether Spellbomb as well. And then going over the mana base, only 22 lands, because we do have three copies of Mox Amber and a relatively low curve. And then we've got four copies of Watery Grave, four Drowned Catacomb, the four Blue-Black Pathway, five Basic Swamps, one Castle Lothwain as another card draw engine, and four Basic Islands. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Turn one Thoughtseize, turn two Schematic into either Emery or Rebuke. And there's Harold, facing a life gain deck. Alright, so 
I'll take their only turn to play and leave them with double Angel Vitality London and no third lands. And then hopefully Emery can mill some cheap artifacts so we can play out of the graveyard. Moxamber's not bad. So, start by playing Emery. Found a spell bomb, so that's great for next turn. And then I guess there's no real reason to play the Mox Amber this turn. Can just hold it for a turn. And uh, yeah, next turn there's a chance we can play Heralds if we draw Black Swords. And this turn I get to Rebuke. I was hoping they didn't play Daxos here and played another three mana card. How annoying is Daxos? It's not annoying enough, I think, to counter. Because we can just manage it with Herald of Anguish once we get it in play. And if their next play is a Speaker of the Heavens, which it is, I probably need to counter that. Alright, we found a Black Source, so that means we get to play Herald of Anguish. And then there's no free artifact to play with Emery, but a one-man artifact is essentially free when it comes to playing my Herald. Opponent has to discard. And a 5-5 stabilizes us nicely. And then we've got Aether Spellbomb plus Heralds with Emery getting it back to essentially get rid of all the opponent's cards. I'll say it could make one of their creatures unblockable if they give it protection from black, but it doesn't help against Spellbomb, because that's a colorless card, and this only protects from colors. Thoughtseize, so... I can essentially empty out my opponent's hand, which seems worthwhile. So let's bounce Angel Vitality. Can also use Herald of Anguish's ability to kill the Alsade for what it's worth. Make the opponent discard. Get back a spell bomb. And my opponent concedes. Yeah, they see what's happening. I can bounce their creatures over and over, keep making them discard, and then Harold can also take out the smaller creatures using the ability. And yeah, eventually we can start attacking and win the game. So, got a nice loop here with our three cards, Spellbomb, Emery, and Herald of Anguish. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn one Spellbomb. Turn to Emery. And eventually Herald of Anguish, especially if Emery mills some more artifacts. Could also keep up Metallic Rebuke here. What's a critical card I need to counter out of the Mono Red deck? Probably not another one or two drop. So maybe it's fine to tap out for Emery, and if they kill it, that's fine. And then next turn I get to keep up Fatal Push and Metallic Rebuke. And for now we've got a 1-2 that could technically block the Firebrand to make it more difficult to enable Spectacle. Alright, point's gonna shock. Sadly, they had the one mana answer. Ooh, Psy could be good too. Do we tap out for Psy? Yeah, I think so. Don't have any artifacts to follow up with here. But there's a few in the deck we could draw. And a 1-4 is pretty tough to get past. Thermo Alchemists, fine target for Fatal Push. And then we're inching towards eventually casting Herald. If we find one artifact and make a Thopter, we 
are kind of getting there. So let me just kill Alchemist right now. Keep up Metallic Rebuke. Don't really plan on sacrificing the Spell Bomb anytime soon. Because it's essentially one mana for Herald. And I'm happy just staying back with my Master Thopterist. The sooner we get Herald in play, the better, of course, especially if my opponent still has all those cards in hand. And I'll keep Rebuke to counter more Thermo Alchemists or creatures that could deal damage past my 1 4 blocker. Electrostatic Field, yeah, I think that's worth countering. It's probably gonna deal enough damage over time where it's gonna be a problem. And my opponent also hasn't missed a land drop yet, so we risk them being able to pay for whatever I try and counter. So Metallic Rebuke does have a pretty fast expiration date. Alright, opponent's gonna try and take out Psy. Using Lightning Strike and Firebrand. Now I could use Spell Bomb to save it, which might be the play here. Yeah, I don't hate it. Another Fatal Push. So we've got our next creature covered. Yeah, just need to find an artifact here, and then we should be good. Electrostatic Field dies to Fatal Push. As soon as I get the chance... So, if I find a zero mana artifact, I could play Herald next turn. Sadly, my opponent's empty handed, so the discard clause is not all that relevant anymore. But a 5 5 flyer can end the game in four attacks. If the Pyromancer attacks, I will block. If they want to 2 for 1 themselves, that's fine by me. Secure the Critics finishes off Psy. Ooh, Tesseract was a great draw. Make an Ethereum cell. And then next turn I can play Heralds. Ramana Prunes only deals damage to opponents. And then we're also reaching the ultimate from Tesseract here. Which we can use next turn. And then we'll have a pretty fast clock between Heralds and the 5-5 Ethereum cells. So I'm liking my chances against a Mono Red Burn. Opponent does have 3 Deserts total, which represents 6 damage, so... Yeah, the mana bases have definitely improved over time in Historic. They might have to burn Tesseract here if they've got a burn spell, but the more burn spells they use stopping my creatures and planeswalkers, the less likely they are to burn me out. Secure the critics just going face. And yeah, I think it's time to ultimate. One of my finest creations. And we'll get in for 10. Can still use Herald to kill a creature if needed. And I don't think they're gonna draw one card that deals 8 damage. Maybe if I was at 10 and they drew a second right, but uh, yeah, Lightning Strike's not gonna do it. And there we go, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? It's missing a cheap artifact to go with Tezzeret's Touch. But I do have double Thoughtseize early on, and then Tezzeret can make an Ethereum cell that we can turn into a 5-5. I'll try it. It's going to be pretty bad against any aggressive decks, taking so much damage. But it's not an aggressive deck, it's a colorless ramp deck with no actual ramp cards, and I can take both Maze Mind Tomes, which is probably the play here. 
and then hope they don't draw a ramp for Forsaken Monuments. And Mox Amber is actually a pretty nice draw since we can turn it into a 5 5 next turn already, which will definitely increase the amount of pressure we have to try and close out the game quickly because the Colorless deck is going to be much better in the late game. Opponent hasn't found any life gain just yet, so this could be a 4 turn clock. Blast Zone doesn't deal with Mox Amber or Tazard's Touch all that well. So we'll get in there. And then I think between Sai and Emery, I'll play the Emery here. Found a servo schematic, which we can maybe play. Opponent gonna take a blast soon. Alright, Radiant Fountain's actually relevant. The two life means maybe they get an extra turn. So I could take a turn off beating down here to play Tazeret by tapping the Mox Amber for mana. Is it worth it? I could potentially kill my opponent in two attacks, hit them for six, hit them for six again, but they could also decide to just take a blast zone and then destroy all three mana cards, and then I wouldn't be able to play Tezzeret anymore, so I need an alternate avenue of victory, which the ultimate provides. This will end badly for you. And then there's not much I can do with Emery, so we might as well tank for one. Suppose they can activate Mobilize District next turn, but if they're deciding to use District instead of casting Forsaken Monument, I'm pretty happy. So they're gonna take a Blast Zone to three. And place Forsaken Monuments. Alright, sadly, didn't find any interaction here. So next turn I could just play like an Ulamog or an Ugin, and there's not much I can do about it. I guess I could play Psy. Draw. And then technically draw into a Thought Seize, but the odds of that happening are pretty slim and it's a pretty all in play that's not guaranteed to work. So I don't think I bother. So we'll just plus and hope that they don't have an Ugin or Ulamog next turn. And hit for 6 as opposed to play Server Schematic. If they play Ugin minus 4, Servo Schematic's not really gonna make much of a difference. I guess never mind, I probably should. Because we also get a Thopter from Psy, so we do get a few colorless creatures here. Which could make a difference if they have an Ugin. Alright, let's see what they've got. If their play is just to sacrifice Blast Zone, it's not that bad, because still have Tesseract Ultimate. Mystic Forge gains two, so I can put them to one next turn. Well, now we can potentially kill them if they don't have another spell. So, yeah, Ultimate Tesseract. And then turn probably my Servo Schematic into a creature. And hit for seven. And we've got Exaxes. So yeah, I guess my point was just hoping to hit another spell they could cast on top of their deck by using Mystic Forge, but that did put them dead on board to a Desert Ultimate. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, except it doesn't have any cheap artifacts to really enable some of my improvised cards. So if we draw a cheap artifact in the first two turns, this end could definitely work out nicely. I'll try it. And then probably just play this tapped as opposed to keep up Fatal Push, since we don't have a turn two play lined up anyway. And our opponent is a Monoret, so saving the two damage is relevant. And 
and then I guess I'll wait. Reason to main phase fatal pushes so they can't enable raid. Ooh, my opponent might be on goblins instead. All right, I guess we'll kill the firebrand. Do I kill a random token? Probably not. Just play Emery here, I think, to get the ball rolling on those artifacts. So we can eventually play Herald of Anguish. And then next turn I can maybe go Schematic into Metallic Rebuke to counter a Krenko. Don't have a great way to enable Revolt for Fatal Push to kill War Chief at the moment. At some point I did have Fabled Passage in mana base, but it was a little awkward since we're playing a low land count, so it was tapped too often for my liking. But we get to play a Servo Schematic here. And then... I guess we'll just play this untapped in case we need to Fatal Push or in case my Servo Token dies and I still need access to Metallic Rebuke afterwards. Goblin Matron, thing that resolves. And this might get Muxus, which we can counter next turn. Or get Sikrenko. And then... I guess what I could do is trade and then Revolt can kill the War Chief. Yeah, that's probably worth it. All right, Thoughtseize can have a look. Emery gets back Ornithopter. So four, five, six, seven. I could play Heralds if I tap out, but that seems a little risky since that I'll just Thoughtseize, take their only card, and then we've got Metallic Rebuke up, and then next turn we'll play Herald. So the good news is my opponent doesn't have anything in hand. The bad news is that Herald's discard effect is not going to be very impactful. I'll chump, because we can just get Ornithopter back with Emery. Saves me two damage. And a spell bomb is a great draw. So now do I go shields down or rebuke? I would have to tap out for it, so if they top deck Muxus, I'll be sad. But I think I gotta get this in play. Put a bit of pressure on them, put a 5-5 blocker out there. And then, if we can survive this turn, we'll be okay. Alright, just use this castle. Seems fine. Even if they have a jump palm, they can't finish off Herald. So probably kills... nope, still goes for Herald. Not sure what that play's all about. We'll block the actual creature since the spell bomb is better at dealing with the token. And another Herald. Hmm, playing the second Herald might be a little greedy in case they top deck Muxus, but I would empty out my opponent's hand. How greedy do we get? Alright, let's go for it. It might not be the correct play, but it's the fun play. And my opponent concedes, so I guess it was not a bad play after all. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Spell bomb to maybe play turn two Emery, or we can take it slow and go with a turn one Thoughtseize instead. So Glasspool Mimic typically indicates the Neoform combo deck. So I don't have to Thoughtseize turn two or their turn two play. We need to keep it to try and take away Neoform before they can cast it at four mana. So I think I'm okay just playing the spell bomb for now. And then turn to Emery, turn three maybe, Thoughtseize. 
depending on if they play a turn 2 mana creature. Interesting, my points on spirits instead. Well, that does change the equation, although I still want to thought seize before they can collect that company, I guess. If they're playing the banned version. So I would still want to wait with thought seize. They could counter Emery if they've got lofty denial. But so be it. They might just flash in a rattle chains. Alright, if they had the lofty denial. That's fine. Well, I guess we can try again, and this time I do get to Thoughtseize. I guess we'll open up with Thoughtseize to get a bit more info. And then I can decide to play around another Denial if they have it. Alright, opponent's gonna flash in Rattle Chains this time. And they did have Company, no green mana yet to cast it, and another Lofty Denial. But I do get to play Emery here. So I think I still take the... Hmm. It's actually interesting because Sai would line up quite well on this board. Making a bunch of Thopter tokens. So maybe I do leave the company in their hand hoping they don't find green mana. Take the Lofty Denial. This turn play Emery. And then next turn Sai can start making Thopters to block their spirits. Bit of a risky play if they draw the green mana here. But maybe it's what I'm supposed to do. Alrighty, so we'll play Sai. And then probably play Spellbomb for now. Could play Mox Amber too, I suppose. And then we can maybe just activate Spellbomb. Make a Thopter. Alright, so now we've got a Psy Emery engine, which can draw a card each turn with a Spell Bomb. And gotta dodge that green mana source. Take four. And I'll just draw for now. If we can find Herald of Anguish, we could put this game away in a hurry. Tensrit's also a nice one. So we'll go with Spellbomb. And play Tensrit's. Resolves. Could try and take out one of their spirits. If they have another rattle chains, I'll be sad. So maybe we're just plussing. And then I might use Spell Bomb to protect Tezzeret. And then work our way up towards an ultimate. Will bend to my will. And stay back. Could attack with Sai. Don't know if that's really necessary. Alright, Shacklegeists, if they have another spirit, that could be bad. Ooh, a Spectral Sailor, so they get to tap down one more token. So all spirits could attack. Yeah, I guess that happens. Probably gonna use Spell Bomb to bounce one of their creatures. Unclear which one that should be. Maybe Shacklegeist, because it doesn't have Flash itself, but I guess Rattle Chain's still in play. Yeah, I guess we'll wait and see which creatures attack Tazeret to decide to use Spell Bomb. But they might just go face. Right, opponent draws with a Sailor. That's acceptable. And they found Hallowed Fountain, still no green mana. And just goes face, so I'll use this defensively. And probably bounce either Herald or Shacklegeist. Let's go with Herald, I guess, which is the most expensive to replay. Mm. 
Metallic Rebukes, excellent. Alright. Get back Spell Bomb. I could start minusing Tesseret, but we're so close to an ultimate. And now with Rebuke and Spell Bomb available, I feel pretty safe. So they can pay for Metallic Rebuke now. Now they can't. And our point's just gonna pass. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll use a Spell Bomb to bounce Shackle guys, maybe. Flashes and rattle chains, which I'll counter. Schematic makes another Thopter. Yeah, ultimating seems fine here. I could keep Tesseret in play a little bit longer, but that doesn't seem necessary. And then, what do we turn into a 5-5? Five, five? Could just be a Thopter. And then we'll start attacking. Alright, I feel relatively safe here with four flying blockers and a spell bomb. Kira, alright, Kira could be good. Makes it so my spell bomb's less effective. I guess we'll bounce rattle chains now. Yeah, our opponent got a bit unlucky never to find that green mana. Which could have made a big difference. So we ended up making the right call with the uh, Thoughtseize not taking company. And resolving Psy, which definitely kept us alive here, making all these tokens. Alright, we'll play a Spell Bomb. And play another one. Move to combats. Make another 5-5 flyer. Get in for 10. GG's. Now my opponent explodes. Alright, so we managed to beat Band's Spirits as well, even if they were missing a color. So overall our deck did quite well today, and we faced a wide variety of matchups. So the cheap interaction between Thoughtseize, Fatal Bush and Metallic Rebuke, backed up by a quick win condition, whether it's a Tazard's Touch, or Tazard the Schemer ultimating, or just a Herald of Anguish, is kind of the key to success for this deck. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.